There we go. Hello everyone and welcome back to the podcast. I'm your host Sage Joe Tone Up. Here with episode 140 of Sports OV Topics here on the podcast today, guys. Um, got some bolts to get into for this weekend as far as sports goes. John Jones making his return to the UFC. Saturday, we got the Combine coming up starting today and then ending Monday. Get a little just about that. MLB Spring Training is in the book, is starting, and the season will officially get underway. Luckily, at the end of the month on the 30th. So, got that to preview as well. Also, got to talk about what's been going on in basketball recently as we are now officially in March. And it's only going to get crazier from here. But, the last before we get into... The bulk of it all, thank you for joining me. Of course, if you're new to the podcast and you guys, or if you're recurring for one of my videos, click the subscription there in the corner, subscribe, find all video. So if you want to catch up more on my whole podcast or playlist of the rest of my sports related videos aka sports overview of topics as well as my pro wrestling reviews if you're in those as well um, click the subscribe or subscription there and take you to what you need so thank you let's get into it shall we so first off, UFC 285 is on Saturday. Saturday, John Jones makes his return. Saturday in the headliner, UFC 285 against Cyril Gang, who has been very much on the up. As of late, you know, he's been what we've expected. You know, Cyril game besides his loss versus Francis Ngannou for the undisputed UFC heavyweight crown, he continues to impress. You know, whether it's against Alexander Volkov, whether against Tai Tuovasa in his last fight, which was one, whether against Derek Lewis, you know, Saro Gain is a specimen, he's a stud, and he's a very good striker that he cannot, I mean, Tuvasa played the game well with him, but unfortunately got finished. So, you know, how this fight will go, it's definitely an interesting one, but at the same time controversial. You know, John Jones, his first fight at heavyweight is for the vacant UFC heavyweight crown. I mean, we know, you know, Francis and Gano. There's been issues, you know, with the UFC brass. You know, the reports have come out. Even Dana White said that he offered the largest contract for UFC heavyweights in history. And he turned that down. And... 
regret how much, but nonetheless, it's one dumb note of this weird flow of things that are going to happen on Saturday. Of course, the other is Stipe Miocic. Now, I've touched up on this a bit, but for those who didn't see that previous video where I talked a little about why or where I gave my first wall effects or thoughts on this fight when it was announced. Stipe, you know, he definitely has a right to be fighting in this fight. You know, definitely has the right, you know. He broke the UFC record for most heavyweight title defenses. You know, um, he, you know, when he lost to Cormier, he rebounded and beat Cormier in his next fight, and he even won the trilogy against DC. Then he knocks, or gets, ask, excuse me, he gets knocked out by Francis, and then haven't heard from him since. I mean, he said that he was in discussions for this fight, but ultimately they won the game. You know, it's obviously sketchy because, you know, Sipe is the former two-time champ and, you know, he hasn't gotten hurt, at least we think. Seems to be in good shape, seems to be, you know, you know, just seems in good spirits. So, but, you know, again, I mean, the weird thing is, I guess, what maybe they had in mind, this just a thought. You know, John Jones is coming off a long layoff. He has a lot in a few years now. Stipe hasn't fought since, you know, losing to Francis a number of time ago. Now, credit that was much more recent than. John Jones last fight, but still having two guys of decent layoffs for a UFC main event would be kind of strange, but nonetheless, Gain has won. He's been active. I mean, you know. Against Tuvasa, you know, lost to Francis, you know, beat Derek Lewis, you know, fights I just mentioned. I mean, he's been active, and ultimately that may be in his favor. Ultimately, though, when you think of the fight, it's a unique fight to break down because John Jones we know is crafty you know he has those long arms long limbs you know we know he has those kicks that can definitely mess up your thighs knees whichever and we know he has dangerous strength. He can take you down and wear on you and finish you or submit you. But 
We have not seen him really knock a guy out. That's the thing. I mean, we have seen him finish guys, but we haven't seen him, you know, knock out a guy, really. I mean, we've seen... Now we've seen Gain knock out Derek Lewis. We've seen Gain, you know, knock out Tua Valsa. We've seen... You get what I'm saying? Game we've seen has knockout power. And I'm not saying Jones doesn't have knockout power. I'm just saying we haven't really seen it as far as knocking out a guy. That's what I'm getting to. Now, the other aspect is that big reach of John Jones. That has been a real problem for many guys. Have not seen a guy with that reach in the UFC since, you know, Seven Shrove is the only guy that was able to rival that reach. And it's an issue when a guy can reach you when you can't, first and foremost. And it's going to be curious because a lot of unknowns. It's like how will John Jones weigh for this fight? You know, how, you know, will he feel? You know, I mean, we have not seen John Jones face as specimen really as big as Sarah game so it's gonna be unique definitely unique to see how it goes out but you know we'll see we shall see as for gain, you know, it's another rewarding experience, you know, to welcome back John Jones. I mean, this is going to be a battle of two rangy specimens, you know. I don't know about this fight, um, you know. I may be slaying to Sarah Gain just because, you know, his striking is some something. It's just difficult because he, he haven't seen Jones face a guy as big in the UFC as Sarah Gain. So, it's going to be unique with the power he has. It's like we know how good a wrestler John Jones is, but will he be able to take down at ease? Again, I don't know. I don't know. But nonetheless, it's going to be an intriguing fight. Which is not the only intriguing fight on the card. The Coleman event, you know, Valentina Shevchenko in another defense takes on Alexa Grasso, which, I mean, is a decent fight, you know, Valentina has, you know, gone through the division at will. Lex Grosso is a pretty good fighter, but, you know, I don't see her really solving the puzzle that is Valentina at this weight class with how it goes. 
The opener, though, of the ma of the main card is an intriguing one. Simply because you know, Bone Nickel, Bone Nickel, is a unique prospect with plenty of hype, and this is a big crap on a big card against a veteran like Jamie Pickett so intriguing 3 and 0 for the bow can he make it 4 and 0 we'll see but bow Nico only 27 you know Intriguing. And we got some interesting fights on the prelims as well. We got Derek Brunson versus Turkey's Duplacy. Sorry if I butcher his name, but nonetheless, you know. Driscus is on a six fight win streak. You know, his last fight, he totally took apart. Well, not really took part, but he did finish Darren Till in his return to make a mark. And him first Brunson, you know, it's another up in competition, another very skilled veteran. So, but, you know, I went down him really for a sec. We got the former... Bantamweight champion Cody Garbrandt headlining the prelims for Trevin Jones. Garbrandt's, you know, it's always a wild fight with Garbrandt. He almost seems, in a weird way, he kind of seems like the Chuck Liddell or Benley Silva version uh, 135 that kind of I mean kind of seems so I mean I like Cody he's been at the mountaintop but he's trying to get he has not really been the same which is weird but he has not been the same since re reaching the top so we'll see here against Trevor Jones, but we'll see. But yeah, some interesting fights going to this weekend. Plenty of basketball to go around, and it's just gonna get more of the merrier um, this month, but. First and foremost, got to show the love to one Damian Lower, who is having himself some type of 20, 20 game streak. I mean, the other day, having a 71 game performance against the Houston Rockets. Now, Credit the Houston Rockets are probably the worst team in the league. Them and the uh, Detroit Pistons. But the streak Dame's been on the last 20 games. I mean, scoring 60, scoring 40 multiple times. 30s, 28, which has been his lowest out of this 20 game stretch. I mean Damian Lillard has been on a roll. And I said it before. Last week. I don't get why he's so on the triplazers. It, it frustrates me. And it frustrates. You know. Many. Many people love the NBA. And no disres disrespect to the Portland. But. You know, Damon Lord, I mean, it's like, what more can you say? 
you know, but nonetheless, great for David Lillard, and you know, a lot of players this season have had their biggest outbursts. First, the Houston Rockets this season, so they got some work to do as well. And there was this score the other day that I'm sure many would have thought that we had two NBA All-Star games, but nope. Sacramento Kings end up being the LA Clippers, which could be a preview of a second round or Potentially, even NBA Western Conference Finals, Sacramento Kings beat the Clippers 176-175, the second highest NBA regular season game since or in 40 years. The highest scored game I mean, in a long time. And double overtime. Kawhi. Kawhi had good showing Paul George. First of all. It seems pretty clear that Kawhi is back. You know, Paul George, Ang Russell, Westbrook, Ted Mix is a treat. But I want to talk a little bit more about the Sacramento Kings because I don't think they're getting enough love for what they have done this season. That's crazy but you know it's something to see I mean they currently have the and yes I know I've talked about them quite a bit in some of my past videos but what they have done this season you know, Harrison Barnes, De'Aaron Fox, I mean, Sabonis, Sabonis, whichever you want to say his name. I mean, those three have been leading a charge. Kevin Herter as well. Those guys have been leading a charge this season. And they've done very good, very good. And I mean... They are currently the three seed in the West behind the Nuggets and the Grizzlies. And, I mean, would you be shocked if they went and represented the West? And the NBA Finals, I wouldn't. I would not. With what they're doing. Now, my NBA Finals pick is still the Denver Nuggets and the Boston Celtics. But, you know, if the Kings, you know, if something can fall their way, like say, like say the Warriors or the Timberwolves knock off the Nuggets or the Grizzlies in the first round, then you know it's open arms. It's almost open arms. 
with the Kings, I mean, there's a lot of parity and closeness as far as games in the West, so, you know, we'll see how they finish, but, I mean, what they're doing is crazy. Crazy. Good news, bad news for the Lakers. Good news, bad news, Lakers fans. The good news is the Lakers had a great 27 point comeback versus the Dallas Mavericks. The bad news is it seems like a LeBron may be out for a couple weeks and that may be an indictment on their plan tournament chances I mean you already released or traded Westbrook now I think if Anthony Davis himself can stay healthy for this whole stretch, him, Russell, and or D'Angelo Russell, they can definitely keep the team afloat in that 10 seed or 9 seed, and then we'll see. But you know, LeBron is ultimately that saving grace for. Making a playoff run or at least winning a playoff series. But all good graces for the, excuse me, Los Angeles Lakers and then Dallas Mavericks. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. What I do, what I can say for the Atlanta Hawks is they certainly hit big as they have a new coach. Quinn Snyder, the former Utah Jazz head coach, which got him to play us many, many years. Got him to the one seed a few times. You know, this could really be a helping point for, you know, a team that has been always in that mix, but needed like a little boost. You know, I mean, Trey Young. We know he's a stud. Bogdanovich is a savvy veteran who will just like you don't want to get on his bad side because he can certainly make it a game against you and you don't want that. Uh, you know they got Murray from the Spurs, who's kind of underwhelmed, but nonetheless, they are right in that mix. I believe as the eighth seed, and you know, they are a unique team. So, you know, Quinn Snyder, five year deal with the Hawks. Definitely good, especially because we know the back and forth kind of scene between Trey Young and Nate McMillan. I believe Nate McMillan will get a job sooner rather than later, new job, but we'll of course have to see. But good for the Atlanta Hawks. Lastly, I want to touch. It's been a while since 
I talked about football and NFL news last, but we are in that season. The Los Angeles Rams have released Bobby Wagner. Now, Bobby Wagner, I saw something that said that Pro Football Focus or something said that Bobby Wagner was the highest rated linebacker last season. And they released him. Now, you know it's crazy because... Yes, he's in his mid-30s, but in no way do I see his play or motor shutting down anytime soon. So, I mean, you have a guy that's still in his run, and that was just weird. But when you consider that their reports are also going around that they may change trade Jalen Ramsey certainly unique because you know look they made a super team in 2021 they won the Super Bowl they did their due now with the expenses you know they cut gotta cut some losses and you know their bread and butter is offense and offensively. So, you know, while it may seem shocking, still, so, the offense. So, Matthew Stafford's big contract. He signed Allen Robinson. You know, Cooper Cup, his deal. Pay more assets to the offensive line. Draft better. You know, We'll see, but unique moves for the Rams. But anywho, that's sports over you, topics for you. Thank you for joining me. Um, if you like to see it, leave a like, leave a thumbs up. How about the video? How about the channel? Thank you guys all uh, for episode 140. Uh, I'll be back next week sometime. But keep you updated. Love you guys. Peace.